It's a big question, isn't it? Uh, you know, for example, is it a tunnel to somewhere? Does it connect two places? The sort of initial response, the reason I start by saying, you know, how long is it? Is because if it's just under a fence, then you dig a hole, yeah? You just dig down, you dig under, and you come up the other side. You know, sometimes you don't need any support at all. You know, you have, um, you have uh, a sort of horseshoe shape, yeah? Like this. And you're in here, you know, the person's in here, and this is all just rock. And you want it flat because you want to walk through it. And then it's an arch because you want the, the ground to arch over, yeah? to act like a natural arch. You have to be sure that you're going to be safe. Safety is number one thing, because if there's a collapse and you're in the tunnel, then you, you die. How do you know uh, the, the, the underground? The, your first target is to know what is underground. Key is um, what kind of ground it is. Um, because if it is rock, that's different than if it's sand. And if it's wet, it's different than if it's dry. And if it's deep, it's different than if it's shallow. So um, all these things you have to think about. So a good way to know what is underground is of course to do vertical uh, balls and what you require for this is a drilling machine. Oh, you have to make the tunnel uh, with a team, really, because you need people to... Say you're digging here, you know, you're lying on your back digging here, you need a bucketer there, you need a bucketer there. So this person, well, we usually use sacks, so you drag the sack back to there and then clip it on. That person would bring it up here and then he would carry it to there and then you'd have someone up the top emptying it. Your first tunnel will never work. You learn a lot by doing one. Then the next one may be a bit better, and then the next one. It's quite hard digging a tunnel. What you can do is do a wider geological uh, study. So, step zero actually, before the vertical balls. Uh, so, uh, drilling. Uh, step zero is the um, geological study. Uh, you'd probably say rock, yeah, which obviously all these categories have subcategories. Rock, uh, granular soil, which is sands, gravels, and cohesive soils, which are the clays and the silts. Essentially the queen owns all of the land. Um, so she's like the, the monarch is the ultimate, the sovereign is the ultimate, you know, owner who has dominion over the land. So what you're going to have is maybe, uh, let's say, a layer like this, which is going to be the the clay, and then you're going to have uh, a layer like that, which is going to be your gravel, and then the. Let's let's call them let's call them one, two, and three or whatever. Okay. It's pretty much property of the state. You d you don't really have. We we have some places that have commons, but even the commons are kind of already owned. So the whole of the kind of the state itself owns all of the land basically. Um, but there are obviously some public spaces that we feel like we own. I think they should be publicly available in France, for example. It's the IGN maps. This is London clay. Mm -hmm. This is chalk. And then all this yellow and red is, well, the, the, this is um, uh, alluvium. And, and all this is, this is sands and gravels and this is alluvium. Alluvium is the silt from the river. So the land that you would think would be public space or, or, or space that would be ours, I suppose, is, is, is already kind of owned. Um, yeah, and that's the same of 
around the country really. This is Gloucester. And this is this is similar, this is quite close to Gloucester, Sirencester, but completely different, you know. Um, even the thing that we think is ownership, like fee simple it's called, um, is where you have a possession for your life. So but the thing is is that is still time bound because it ends when you when you end. You know, when you're driving a long tunnel, you want to decide which is the best ground to tunnel in. Mm -hmm. You want to get down to it and then follow it. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you look at a section through the channel tunnel, it goes down through the outer layers into the chalk and it follows the chalk. The best kind of ground maybe for tunneling is, is uh, chalk. And um, the chalk is self-supporting once you get to a certain depth. When you dig down, when you get away from the oxidised layers, it's a sort of deep grey, stiff clay, very, very consistent. And you can cut a face and it will just stand up. Uh, the traditional way of digging a military mine was to keep it as shallow as possible so that you wouldn't have these problems. And so the manuals from before the First World War, the military mining manuals, would basically say that your tunnels should not be you know, more than about 30 feet deep, a, a lot shallower than that, mm. because um, it was quicker, you know. You, didn't, you only needed to be deep enough to um, uh, not to be seen. If you're digging in sand, then you can use your hand, or, and your, but your hand gets a bit sore, so you could use a, a small piece of wood or a piece of stone or a, a piece of metal, anything at all to to pull the sand away. So if you remove some of the sand in this area, what happens? All of the sand which is around this area will collapse in the area where you remove your sample of sand. A lot of tunnels require a lining, yeah? And you have a lining here. And if you've got that sort of even stress, it's a little bit like in an arch bridge, you want the you want the line of thrust to stay within the structural lining. Um, so that's one consequence of having a granular material, is that you need to be able to, um, to support as you drill. And you think, right, so how do I do this simply? And what you do is you make um, pieces of wood, you're cutting your pieces of wood that look like this. So you get a board, or you make a board, you know, you wouldn't use probably ply board because it would rot mm. and get all warped and stuff, you know, so you make shuttering and you put that on the, the roof so these boards run that way and these boards run that way and they're all identical. And then you'd bang in a piece of wood to go there as tight as possible and there a thinner bit on the floor so you can crawl over it tight as possible to hold it in so it can't twist out. Yeah. So that's holding that and it's, you know, obviously you need a bigger tunnel than you expect because the shuttering takes up mm. quite a lot of room. So this is the French um, kind of school of mines, school of military mines um, manual. And um, so they're still um, teaching or they're still kind of advocating the same pre-war um, methods. Um, but things kind of get updated, so there's a sort of updated version that especially uses better technology. And it's important that you keep it simple, nothing too complicated. Um, it's a good idea to keep the tunnel very straight, because going around corners means you have to have complicated pieces. So for your kind of DIY tunneler, um, it's much easier to do it according to this manual from before the First World War. I usually did about maybe a six foot section at a time, 
you know, and then uh, often you dig on a bit as well, you know, it depends how you don't would usually dig a lot further and then do it. But uh, yeah, it's just nice once you've got your shuttering and you feel a lot more secure. So um, if you want to make your own tunnel, um, it's quite simple to do it. Um, but it's useful if you've got carpenters, especially you know, to, to prefabricate these frames. Um, to do your timbering. You don't need many tools really. Yeah, a spade's really good. Bricky hammer can help, you know, especially doing the edges and stuff, you know, getting the corners good and things. Uh, of course, a lump hammer for doing that and hammer and nails. So clay kicking was a way of, um, a method that um, was being used uh, before the war for digging through clay. So in, in Britain, they were digging through clay to dig sewers or the underground railway, but especially sewers where you would need a fairly small tunnel. We probably had, we had bars to get, if we came across any rocks or anything, often you'd have to prise a rock out. And uh, we had uh, like, a, you know, those, uh, you know, army spades that fold up, you know, just to get in the smaller places. But mostly, for me, it was just laying on your back with a spade and it was like digging down, but along. It's, uh, it's a quick way of digging a tunnel that's too small for you to really, um, uh, if, you're, if you're, you know, picking or if you're shoveling, you need a bit of space to, um, uh, to use a spade. And it was, um, it was a kind of quiet way of working as well. If you want to dig in rock, well, that's very slow, and maybe you want to use explosives? Um, that's planning permission, so yeah. I, yeah, here you'd have to go to the local authority and get planning permission, so um, if you were thinking of trying to, I suppose, build a tunnel or something like that that might not be on land that's yours, you'd have to really think about either trying to buy that land or getting some kind of right away, um, if you wanted to do it legally. Um, suppose I have a um, some rock, and I want to break it, so I can drill holes. Uh, with a drill, so these are holes, and I put explosive into the holes and I connect them all together and then I blow it up and this breaks off. Um, yeah, so different materials equal what? Equal different tools. But the thing about rock then is the tunnels are then smaller because it's so hard to make a tunnel. You just squeeze through the tiniest spaces. I've, I went into one very tight tunnel and I hated it because there's no way you can go. You've got no short, you can't just get up and walk around, you're stuck. You know, we didn't ever think, oh, what if it gets, you know, because if you did think about that, you, would, you, you wouldn't do it, would you? So you just get on with it and because I think because you're digging from day one so you're gradually getting into the tunnel you know and uh, I just never thought about I, I was young I suppose as well and uh, perhaps a bit naive. I think you have to if you get stuck or you feel panicked you just have to relax almost go to sleep well, it's like if you're flying in a plane, isn't it? You know, it's not that different in a way. You're in a claustrophobic place to a certain extent out of your control. You rationalize it. If you're that sort of character, that's how I personally do it. I rationalize it and say, well, chances are we're fine. There's various reasons for having a rail system. One is to carry you know, uh, sand away from the, where you've, you're digging. It also makes it quicker for getting a person 
to the end where they're digging because if you can only dig say for 20 minutes half an hour before you're you know it's tiring one of the reasons i ask you how long your tunnel is mm -hmm. the longer you get the more of a problem you're servicing the faces and somebody could be on the trolley you know here is their feet and you know here there's body and so there we are and they're um they're on this thing and they and it gives you an idea of how big this is it's you know, it's all quite small um and they're pulling themselves through but then down here you'll have a uh a, a tube so yeah you have a computer fan you know a small computer fan um, and uh, a car battery. In engineering terms, you call it working in confined spaces. And if you have gas, it tends to sink. And uh, you just build a little box. You know, we usually use the old lunch box, you know, so you'd have the tube coming into the lunch box, you know, and then uh, on the lunch box, you'd have the little computer fan. And so it's particularly difficult in a tunnel because it all sinks to the bottom of the tunnel, you know, and builds up and builds up. So it's sucking air from the surface. Yeah, yeah. You know, there are inexpensive gas detectors for, you know, carbon monoxide or for um, natural gas. We'd light a candle quickly to see yeah. if uh, what the flame's like, you know, and uh, if the flame went out, get out. But yeah, ventilation is big. It's a good. It's a good point, and it's important. So normally underground, you have a a water table, and if you dig down and you're underneath the water table, then your tunnel will always be full of water. You have to avoid that. You know, the classic way is that the tunnel has a little bit of a fall on it, and in the middle of the tunnel, you have a sump. And then any water that gets in runs to the low point, and in here you have a pump. Sump and pump. That probably, that's, that's an interesting point actually. So because the law changed in 2012, so it became a criminal offence to squat in a residential property. So if you dug under a commercial property, then you have what's called squatter's rights. So you still have the kind of the time to be there until the court removes you. So the landowner can't remove you themselves. Now, if it's been very dry, then the water table will be down here. But if it's been raining a lot, the water table can be up. I mean, you're always coming into different kind of regimes of property. So um, if you, for instance, tunneled your way to France, then you're going to a, you're probably going to have customs on your back from this end and then B, accessing, you know, somewhere without, I suppose, the, the, the correct methods. Now, if you're digging a tunnel here, then that's fine because you're above the water table. But if you're digging a tunnel and it's down here, And if the water table comes up, then there's nothing you can do. This will just fill up with water, and it's bad news. I would say if you're, if you're doing a DIY tunnel underwater in granular soil, um, you're in trouble. <laughs> you're in trouble. So you know, Brunel, that, the Thames Tunnel, yeah. you know, the first subsea tunnel uh, was really difficult. Lots of people died, you know. Yeah, I think in, if, it's, if someone's life is in danger, you'd, you'd hope that the person who owned the property that they were escaping to would be understandable. But it's up to the, the property owner to, to enforce anything. Yeah, one big advice is the following. If you want to build your tunnel below your building and your house, if you want to build your tunnel here, you need to make sure that you are not doing any uh, bad to those existing structures. 
you don't leave unsupported faces over the weekend or over the holidays, you know. Whenever you leave the site for any period of time, you, you leave your work supported and safe. Because it looks stable, but then it starts to move, you know. So it is, it is very much a, a, a tip. Say you start building here, all the grounds which is, uh, which is in this area wants to collapse inside. And then you're going to be able to move and all the ground which is in here wants to collapse inside, etc, etc. I suppose you've, you've, if you can design the tunnel before you start, you know where it's going to begin and where it's going to end. You know how much material you're going to need, you know how much material you're going to need to dispose of. You can estimate how long it's going to take you. Um, try to make it so there are not too many surprises. So you have this sort of circle here which wants to collapse inside the tunnel. And as you move, the circle moves with you. Okay? And in the end what happens is where your tunnel needs to be, the zone of influence of your movement is going to be a wider tunnel. Simply. I mean, I think You'd obviously have to be very fit and healthy and be ready to, yeah, possibly go to jail, <laughs> I guess. So you have your hard rock tunnel, you have your sort of uh, lined tunnel, but these tend to be iron, like the tubes, or concrete. And then you have your sort of mining, sort of pit prop type. You know, and this is your, this is your DIY tunnel. Well, the advice that um, one of the British commanders had was in future, um, after the war, he said, um, don't, don't do it. <laughs> he, said, mm. he said, if there's a day, you know, avoid at all costs um, tunneling because once you start, it's really difficult to stop. Just being really legally aware, you know. Um, I think that's the thing, is, is that there's, there's a misconception of people not knowing what they're doing, but obviously they really know what they're doing. So yeah, just be one step ahead, I suppose. Yeah. Literally. <laughs>